Hello and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program. Today I've got another tutorial and in this episode we're going to be going away to another planet. Specifically we're going to be going to Juna. So you can see me now in something like six times faster than normal speed uh, building building a lander to land on Juna. Now uh, Juna is the second closest planet, planet to Kerbin. I think it I think uh, Eve is the closest, and it's it's um it's got an atmosphere. It's got quite a thin atmosphere though. It's got um uh, a thinner atmosphere than Kerbin, I think. So that's why we're using quite a few parachutes, and that's also why we put a lot of struts on it so that uh, because sometimes when you open the parachutes, you can still be actually going quite fast, so there can be quite a lot of strain on on the on the the lander so uh, I've had quite a few ships that I've sent to Juno that have been um, that have been broken apart when when the parachutes deploy but yeah it's just launching now I didn't show any of the making of the launch stage because that's actually already in one of the videos on the channel uh, I think it was the third episode of my of my let's play of this yeah I think it was and there's Juno and that's actually in completely the wrong place. Uh, so once we've got this into a stable orbit, uh, we're just going to uh, we're, we're just going to uh, go back down onto the launch pad and get something that we can warp very fast, and uh, so that we can we we can um, warp Kerbin round to where Juno actually is. Okay, so we just decoupled uh, last set of engines and now we're just using the core engine of this launch stage and we've got quite a high apoapsis when you're when you're going to try and burn to get into interplanetary space you want to have as low a periapsis as, as possible because um so you want it to be around uh 70 kilometers i think that's how low it can be before it gets into the atmosphere and we're just Warping around to get into into the right place with Juno, you you want Kerbin to be just behind Juno for this, but um, uh, yeah. So we're just coming back on that there, and yeah, low periapsis. That's what I was talking about. Uh, you want to have a low periapsis because you get a more efficient burn the lower you are uh, over something that has gravity. So it, your engines are more efficient the closer they are to a planet, which is good with stuff like uh, like moons, like the Moon or uh, Minimus or Ike, places like that where there's no atmosphere, because then you can get a really efficient burn by just skimming across the surface of the mountains, which, well, you might not want to do that because you might actually crash into the mountains, but who really gets. So yeah, we've got our escape, so we're going to be going into an orbit of the sun now. Well, we're already technically in an orbit of the sun, of the sun but oh well. And yeah, so the we've set Juno as our target, and that's given us a descending and ascending node. And basically, what these mean, they are the... Uh, whether our orbit is on the same... Uh, is at the same angle as the orbit of our target. So you need them to be the same, otherwise you will... Do your burn to get out to Juno and your be on completely the wrong angle. So here you can see we got an encounter straight away because we aligned our planets to be in the right place. So now we're just using these two nuclear engines to burn out to Juno. And uh, yeah, well, um, the reason that we're using the nuclear engines there is because, uh, well, basically, a rocket will usually have, most rockets will have three main stages. So you have the launch stage, which has to have lots of fuel and lots of thrust to get it out of the atmosphere of Kerbin and into an orbit. And then you have this stage, which has not as much fuel and very efficient engines, because you don't need to be doing those those burns very fast, you just need them to be efficient. So you'll have uh, you'll be using the nuclear engines and then not as much fuel. And then obviously then you'll have your lander, I suppose, and then some 
some vehicles, some rockets will have a full stage. They might have another another smaller rocket on top of the lander that can be used to uh, return to Kerbin. So you'll put all your crew into that rocket and then and then fly them home in the the smaller one because it's a lot more efficient to take uh, just the small rocket out of the out of the atmosphere than pushing all of your lander up back up out of the atmosphere. So we are just coming down over Juno. I've put quite a quite a low periaps. I think it was about ten kilometers. But actually, before I did that, I had a higher periaps just so I could get rid of my speed in different, different, uh, different places, so different, different times. And we just burnt the engines a little bit just to slow us down before the, the uh, that orange parachute, the drogue one. That uh, you definitely want to be using a drogue parachute for landing on Juno because um, you uh, you'll be coming in quite fast. So you don't want to be using your main parachutes to start off with. So yeah, yeah, you definitely use a drogue. And basically, all a drogue parachute is is it's a small parachute that opens very high in the atmosphere, so that it doesn't uh, doesn't create as much g-force on the lander. And there we go. We've landed on Juno, and for some reason, I'm I'm time warping a lot. Not sure why, probably just to keep these two Kerbins bored, I guess. Don't really know why why I did that. But yeah, that is our landing on Juna, and I will see you in the next episode.